First of all, uh, I'd like to introduce the people in front of you. No? Uh, si June Bondoc, Attorney June Bondoc, oh, yeah. and Mr. Peng Perez Etagli are directors of MRTC uh, and uh, nominees of MRT Holdings. Uh, and of course, David Narvasa, Attorney Narvasa, is our spokesperson, no? as you know. Uh, of course, they are here also because uh, Secretary Abaya made the comment of personality, of having no personality. Uh, there's nothing further from the truth. MRT Holdings is the owner of the entire system. The directors sitting in MRTC that deals with the OTC are merely our nominees or representatives. There is nothing that they can say nor do without the express approval of the owners, namely MRT Holdings, whom I am chairman and president of. So if you talk about personality, we are the proper personality to, to be talking about this. We are the ones who made the system. We are the ones who built it. We built it on time, on schedule. We delivered on budget. And we know what's best for the system, which is why we're talking and it's why we're speaking out on, for the best interest of the system and the public. And of course, MRTC directors are here uh, to show their support for everything that we are discussing this morning. So uh, first of all, maybe we'd like to have the statement from uh, Attorney Narvasa. No? Okay, this is a statement of MRTH, uh, long overdue. That's the reaction of uh, the chairman of uh, MRTH, Mr. Sobrepeña, to the announcement of Senator Grace Po that the subcommittee has recommended the filing of appropriate charges against uh, Transport Secretary Joseph Emilio Abaya and other transport officials for their negligence and inaction that resulted in the problems in the MRT system. The private sector owners commend Senator Grace Po for her recommendation to file the appropriate charges. The irresponsible inaction of the DOTC has already resulted not only in damage to the system, but danger to the riding public. The issue has dragged on for years in spite of many warnings of the private sector without any appropriate action from the administration. As far as MRTH is, MRTH is concerned, the biggest sin that DOTC committed is deliberately ignoring or failing to respond to the proposals given by the private sector that would have at this point already ensured that the system was properly maintained, fully functioning, and already upgraded at no cost to the government. The proposals did not come from only MRTH or Mr. Sobrepeña's other companies, but also included proposals from Metro Pacific Investment Corporation of Mani Pangilinan, Metro Global Holdings and Sumitomo, and MRTC, of which Mr. Sobrepeña is no longer the chairman. And also, the last proposal was from Global Bia, one of the largest train operators in Europe. The DOTC has ignored these proposals, which should have resulted in a system that is not only safe, but convenient for people. Instead, the DOTC has opted for unqualified providers that has caused massive damage to the entire MRT system instead of the increase in capacity that the owners would have wanted to do at no cost to the government. And my, uh, just my reaction to my name uh, being dragged into this. Um, it is not ab about uh, it is not about what Mr. Sobrepeña said or didn't say. It's about me going to the Senate upon invitation of the Senator, good Senator uh, Grace Poe and giving whatever I knew about uh, the MRT system. No? 
And um, whatever I said in the Senate was not merely words. It was backed up by letters, official letters and documents. And I brought some copies of that here. This whole file in front of you was actually submitted to the Senate to back up every single word that I said. So it is not just my words, but actually letters, contracts, official communications between DOTC and my company, MRTC and MRT Holdings. So uh, I hope the good secretary just stops deflecting from the truth. Wag na natin linglangin uh, yung publiko, wag na natin ilihis sa katotohanan, harapin natin ang issue, sagutin natin yung issue, wag na natin dalhin kung saan saan pa yung usapan. The real issue is not what Mr. Sobre Peña said. The real issue are what are the facts contained in these folders, contained in the Senate investigation uh, document. E sana naman sagutin niya na lang to kaysa kung saan saan pa niya dinadala. No? And the truth of the matter is, ito yung issue. MRTC, the private company, MRT Holdings, plus other private companies have submitted no less than eight proposals to government. The last four of which was submitted to Secretary Abaya. Okay, and I, uh, namely these are proposals from MGH, MGH with Sumitomo, MPIC, and Global Via. These proposals were submitted to DOTC and Secretary Abaya to undertake all of the repairs at no cost to government. I repeat, at no cost to government. Uh, ayusin namin yung MRT, uh, ayusin lahat ng reles, i-overhaul yung trains, bibili ng bagong train, dadagdagan ng bagong train, uh, ayusin lahat yan at no cost to government. Ang big question dyan, bakit hindi sinagot ni Secretary Abaya itong mga proposal? And namely, I'm referring to the last few ones given by Metro Global Holdings on behalf of Metro Holdings. Metro Global Holdings with Sumitomo, which was in uh, November 2014 and January of 2015. In February of 2015, MPIC gave a second proposal. The first one they gave was as far back as 2011. The first Metro Pacific proposal was in 2011. And the last one was from a large multinational from Spain with the name of Global Via, which also proposed upgrading, adding trains at no cost to government. The big question is, why did DOTC and Secretary Abaya not respond to any of this? And I believe that is tied up to the uh, Article Number 5 of the Senate Subcommittee, wherein they, they say that DOTC was remiss in its duties, no? And uh, that they did not respond no, to any of these proposals. Okay, so, um, and that is the reason why yung word na inactivity, that the OTC was inactive and did not respond to any of these proposals, should be looked upon and looked into by the Department of Justice and the Ombudsman. Secondly, and more importantly, yung malaking question nito is, bakit hindi in extend yung Sumitomo contract in 2012. Instead of extending it and then bidding it out, ang ginawa ng DOTC, of course, the termination of the Sumitomo contract happened during the term of Secretary Mar Rojas. Okay, so that is true. Yung non-renewal happened during the term of Mar Rojas. However, the signing of the new provider, contractor, PH Trams, was signed by Mr. Abaya. So, Secretary signed the PH Trams uh, appointment. Not only that, he signed it again six months after, and he signed a third one 12 months after. So, he signed three contracts with PH Trams. And the big question is, bakit in awards of PH Trams? This was a two-month-old company capitalized at 650,000 pesos only with no track record whatsoever in mass transport or the rail system. That is the question. Eh, sana yan ang sagutin ni Secretary Abaya instead of kung saan-saan pa natin dinadala yung usapan. No? And then third, they terminated PH Trams and again awarded it to another unqualified maintenance provider, yung Global 
APT Global. Yung APT Global again mismanaged the entire rail system and uh, was even present during the Senate investigation. And to our amazement, ang sabi ng DOTC, parts and service ang kontrata. Ang sabi ng APT Global, service only, no parts. They actually contradicted each other in the Senate investigation. And then last and third, etong kontrata sa Busan. 3.8 billion was awarded to another. I don't even know why they call it a Busan contract because Busan only owns 4% of this company. The 96% is owned by Filipino companies who are in agriculture, plumbing, trading, and other industries which are non-related to rail. These other companies, Filipino companies, were allowed to bag a 3.8 billion contract without any experience in rail. They own 96% of this contract. Busan merely owns 4%. So the big question is, why was this negotiated, not bidded, negotiated in secret even? This came out in the Congress. I was there during a traffic meet when the, the chairperson of Congress uh, si Chair Castello. Castello asked the OTC, who are these people you are talking to about the 3.8 billion contract? Ang sagutu ng the OTC dito eh confidential, secret. To which, of course, the whole Congress was aghast no, as to why there is secret talks with a private company owned 96% by Philippine companies with no experience in rail. So, yan ang malaking question. At sa ngayon, they have awarded it to this company without the benefit of bidding. And of course, last, ang sabi nila, emergency. There is no emergency because the very same issues and awards to the Busan company were already raised by Sumitomo as early as 2012. Sinabi na ng Sumitomo yan, we need an, an adjustment on maintenance because we have to upgrade the signaling, we have to overhaul and the AFC has to be re has to be repaired because of those three humingi ng adjustment yung sumitomo dininay ng the OTC and today three years after they awarded to a company the very same thing sumitomo was talking about three years earlier under an emergency paano naging emergency to three years ago alam na nila to may proposal na ang sumitomo dito by the way if you add the proposal of Sumitomo to the amounts that they have awarded, they have spent close to 1.5 billion more than the original Sumitomo contract. That is grossly disadvantageous to government. Okay? And much worse, ito yung pinakamasakit. Hanggang ngayon, our commuters, the riding public ay naghihirap. Ang ating sistema ay sira-sira. Kahapon lang, nasira na naman, tumirik na naman, at wala nang katapusan, ano? So in spite of spending more money, all these secret negotiations and awards, the public suffers. And that is the greatest injustice of them all. Yan ang dapat sagutin ni Secretary Abaya at huwag na niyang dalhin kung saan-saan yung usapan. Okay, uh, at this point maybe uh, if you have any questions, we can uh, answer them. So in Tagalog. In Tagalog. Bakit po may kasama tayong directors from MRTC? Ano po ba yung sunod? Well, unang-una, yung ating mga director sa MRTC, uh, this is in reaction to yung sinabi ni Secretary, no personality. E doon naman ako nagtataka, paano naging no personality, MRT Holdings, I as Chairman and President, e kami ang may ari ng sistema. Kami ang may ari ng MRTC, the company, kami ang may ari ng MRT3 system. Kami ang gumawa niyan, kami ang tagtapos niyan. E paano naman naging no personality yan? Our uh, directors from MRTC are here to show that they have the personality because they are with MRTC. Second, lahat yung sinabi natin sa Senado, doon kay Senator Grace po, in, nandun yung dalawang MRTC uh, uh, nominees or directors natin. They were with me during the entire uh, proceedings in the Senate investigation. So definitely, there is personality. If there is any personality who has the right to speak about this, it is us, as the owners and the people who built it and know what's best for it. Kaya naman nandito yung ating mga kaibigan no, from MRTC at nominees.
Sabini said June, they're directly transacting with MRTC, not yes. MRTH, yes. which you are the chairman of. Correct. They are from MRTC. Now, MRTC is composed of two groups, all nominees. Lahat ng director ng MRTC, nominees lamang, representative lamang ng MRT holdings namin. Wala naman silang pwedeng gawin o sabihin kung hindi nila kiniklear sa amin as owners. They are merely nominees. They do as we tell them to do. Okay? And it is our hope that the government nominees there clear everything with us as they should legally. No? But Secretary Abaya refuses to deal with the private sector, owners and representatives. Even these gentlemen here are on the board. He, they, he only wants to deal with the government appointed nominees na kaibigan niya o kakilala niya. Okay? So that is the sad truth about it. Selective reality. He refuses to talk to the real owners. He refuses to talk to the private owners in the true spirit of a PPP. Okay? Ang gusto niyang kausap lamang ay mga gobyerno. So, yan yung uh, background ng MRTC. No? Well, you said you support the implementation of the file draft charges against yes. Secretary Abaya. Do you have any plans as a private owner to do the same? To, to drop possibly file yeah. charges? What's your next move? First of all, we, we were the first to file cases against the OTC. Uh, there's a case pending in, uh, in Singapore, okay, uh, and, uh, which is in arbitration, and there is a case now pending in Court the Court of Appeals as well. No? Uh, we have been the ones who have always been objecting to everything that they have been doing, on record and on letter, kaya napakahaba na, napakakapal ng ating file. Everything we have said and done in the last few years have been on record. And uh, we commend the Senate and Senator Po and the committee uh, for taking action. We believe that the action is appropriate and long overdue. Uh, we hope that uh, the Ombudsman, the Department of Justice, will take action because definitely we feel that there is grounds for graft, as uh, recommended by the Senate investigation. Sir, uh, we have evidence. I mean, you've been in the system for a long time, and you're the one saying that there's a lot of damage that you want to do. Should the, the ombudsman or the Senate committee ask for evidence? Can you find evidence to show uh, complicity of the government? Uh, my answer would be yes. Very simply, this. Number one, they're in action to all the proposals of private sector. Their in action is actually against the law. The law states that government should reply within a stipulated number of days to any proposal given to it, especially by the owners of the system itself. So their inaction is already one grounds uh, for possible graft. No? Secondly, the fact that they awarded such a huge contract, an important contract, no, to a company two months old, two months old, capitalized at 600,000 pesos. I think right there you can see the smoking gun. No? You can see the smoking gun in awarding it to PH Rams. Three times. Not just one, but Secretary Abaya awarded it three times. And then finally, APT Global, another company that was not qualified. Okay, It was also awarded to them. And all of this was awarded by way of negotiated bid, purely negotiated, when clearly the government requires it to be bidded out. We're talking of the Busan contract, no? Okay, let me discuss that. Dumaan ng two failed biddings. That, those biddings uh, were for 2.2 billion pesos. 3.8 billion tong inaward nila. Now, is 2.2 the same as 3.8? No. So, yung 1.6 billion difference, there was no bidding here whatsoever. No bidding whatsoever. And yet, they proceeded to award it. So, I think there's definitely grounds for graft there. The fact that there was no bidding. Sinasabi na hindi nyo daw kasi ginawa yung, yung uh, obligasyon 
Okay. Iyan yung iyan yung nakakatawa eh. Nakakatawa, nakakainis, hindi mo alam kung maasar ka, may iyak ka na dito dahil we have eight proposals with the OTC. Ginawa na namin lahat ng pwede namin gawin. I will just read them to you. Ginawa namin lahat ng pwede namin gawin. 1999, year 2000, year 2002, nagsubmit na kami ng proposal to add trains, to upgrade, to increase capacity. Year 2004, year 2005, nagsubmit uli kami ng mga proposal sa DOTC. Unanswered, unacted upon. Year 2007, MRTC proposed to add more trains. Government did not act on it. In year 2009, Government took over the MRTC board by way of the government nominees. O nine ng yarion, which is why in 2011, through through basically a cooperation agreement, Metro Pacific submitted another proposal to add trains, capacity expansion, upgrade, fix the system, everything. In 2011, okay, at no cost to government. In November 2014, Metro Global, in cooperation with MRT Holdings, submitted a proposal to have a fast track repair of the entire system. I use in lahat ng reels, I use in lahat ng bagon, and we can get the system back in operation in 12 months at no cost to government. Hindi si nagut na naman ng DOTC, so I beg to disagree. Pag sinabi niyang wala kaming ginawa, that is a lie. That is a flat lie which we will refute in public and in court if necessary. We did everything we could do by submitting all these proposals. In 2015, we submitted another proposal for capacity expansion and upgrading of the system at no cost to government. In February 2015, Metro Pacific submitted a second proposal Okay, in February of 2015, again, unacted upon by the OTC. And finally, in 2015, a Spanish group, one of the largest infrastructure companies in Spain, submitted a proposal to add trains and to fix the system and to upgrade the system. Everything we say is on record. Everything is in writing. Why Secretary Abaya says, wala kaming ginawa? Wala kaming ginawa kasi hindi nila kami pinayagan gumawa, hindi nila kami pinayagan makapasok sa aming sistema, ni hindi kami makapasok to inspect. Okay, they kept us out of the system, they refused to answer our proposals, and then they have the temerity to say, we did nothing. In reality, it is they who did nothing. It is DOTC and Secretary Abay who did nothing because they refused to act on any of our pending proposals, which is still pending up to now. Yes. Yes. Why do you think government is so resistant to the proposal? Yes, siguro yung problema natin yung at no cost to government. Dapat we trust the government. Yeah. Okay. We don't understand. Okay. We we are at a quandary. We don't understand why government with would even not bother to lift a finger to read, negotiate, discuss a proposal from the creators, developers of the MRT system to fix it, okay, to add trains, to get one million people to ride it. Okay, why they would not even discuss this to us or lift a finger is the big question, which I think they should answer in the Ombudsman or the Department of Justice. Hindi ba kayo na babahala, sir, na para? There was a case also filed against Abaya for well, at least the PH terms of the contract and everything else. But it was filed by the ombudsman. But doesn't that give you an indication that you know whatever is going to be filed against at least this current set of officers will not fly or not prosper? Well, I believe there was a case that was filed. I'm not sure as to what happened to that case. Okay, and. The big question there is uh, Alvi Tangol, the GM of uh, the MRT3 system, was indicted. However, everybody else was not included. Eh, yun naman ang nakakapagtaka. Eh, the lowest guy on the page, which was 
Alvi Tangkol was basically included, pero yung mga boss niya hindi sinama. Eh, yun ang nakakapagtaka. Sir, they're talking buyout now. <laughs> Ito ah, can you imagine, Secretary Abaya wants to spend $54 billion to buy out a bond which DBP Land Bank already owns. Sila na may-ari nito eh. Gusto pa nilang gumasos ng $54 billion. Bakit kaya? Bakit hindi na lang kaya yung $54 billion ibigay natin sa SSS uh, para naman magamit ng mga pensionado? doon sa kanilang hinihinging 2,000 increase. 56 billion yun. Ito, 54 billion. Wala namang kapupuntahan. Okay? It will not even repair a single rail on the MRT. It will be spent and the money will just go to Land Bank and DBP for what? For nothing. So, yan yung buyout. It will go to buy something you already own. Big question. Why do you want to spend 54 billion to buy a bond that you already own? Okay? Why not spend that money and give it to the SSS so they can use it for the pensioners the and, and, let, and uh, let the private sector fix this system. Di ba? Pero yun yung hindi namin naintindihan about the buyout kasi they're not really giving information on kung ano ba yung mga bond talaga and you know, how, it's, uh, how it's going to go down. Ibig sabihin ba sa bibili yung shares nyo rin kasi yung mo? Hindi. Paano ba yung ano? Yung 54 billion is just to buy the bond which is held by DBP Land Bank. How can they say they will buy our shares? They have not even given us a proposal. They have not even talked to us. We have not even, we don't even have a price. Paano nila sasabihin bibilhin yung shares? Ay yung 54 billion, ang kausap lamang nila, DBP Land Bank. Sila-sila lang nag-uusap. Ay yung shares ng government? Yung bond, ano lang yun? Yun yung revenue ng MRT. No? Revenue lang yun. Pero yung shares, okay, which we own, which we hold, Okay, they have not talked to us about buying that. It's not for sale. It's well, at the very least, if they talk to us, then we can see, yeah. diba? We're open to anything, but the fact is they refuse to talk to us. Baka gusto nila take over, hindi buy out. Malamang yun ang iniisip nila. Ha? Pagka alam ko, wala na tayo sa martial law, pero baka yun ang iniisip nila. Pero pwede pa yun, Hindi pwede. We will end up in arbitration. We will end up in litigation. They will lose because they are wrong. You cannot just take over a, a private company with no compensation. It's unconstitutional, It's unconstitutional uh, to say the least. No? Well, we own it. We own it. Diba? So, yung board, even if they have government nominees controlling it, they have no power to sell it unless they get our approval. Kami ang may-ari. They are merely our nominees. Sir, what happens now after the subcommittee report? Basically, it shows that Secretary Abaya gets a failing mark on the MRTP system. So how do we go about now? Are we planning to file any more charges? Government. Are we planning to sit down and talk and ever? Kasi parang hindi naman yung pinansin. Okay, first of all, yung sit down and talk, as you can see, 1999 pa kami naghihintay mag-sit down and talk with them. No? Nung time ni Secretary Abaya, since 2012, we have been waiting for him to sit down and talk with us. There have been meetings that were set that he was supposed to arrive and sit down and talk to us about our proposals. He never showed. Inindyan nga kami. Bigla na lang nag show Ang pinadala yung kanyang mga undersecretary. So wala rin nangyari. So I think sit down and talk Uh, we're, while we're always open, we have been open for that. As a matter of fact, we have proposals that need to be discussed. We're open to it. But I think we are not expecting that to happen because the, the Secretary refuses to talk to private sector, as you can see. Diba? Oh. Uh, now, as to what will happen to them legally and otherwise, I think the subcommittee report uh, will be forwarded to the Ombudsman, to the DOJ for appropriate action. And I think that is what we will just have to await, no? Kung ano yung gagawin ng Ombudsman at DOJ doon sa Senate uh, Subcommittee Report. Sir, can you advance the CEO? Maro, can you say that Maro has a dapat kasama? Si Secretary Rojas, yung under his term, the Sumitomo contract was not renewed during his term. That was 2011. No? Or 2012, yeah. Well, During 2012, when the Sumitomo contract expired, it was not renewed. 
Nung hindi rin ninyo yan, that was during the time of Secretary Mar Rojas. That was the first mistake. Second mistake was negotiating with PH Trams. That was the second mistake, which also happened during the term of Secretary Rojas. And the third mistake was two days into his uh, office, Secretary Abaya signed a contract prepared during the time of Secretary Rojas. Pinirmahan niya. And as a secretary, you should read what you sign because that gave finality to PH Trams. And the rest is tragic history for the MRT. So with all, uh, with all those mistakes, sir, um, may liability for the Secretary Rojas? I think that would be something that the courts should look into. Okay? Ang uh, kinokote ko lang si Secretary Abaya, ang sabi niya, Two days lamang daw siya sa opisina at dumating sa kanya yung kontrata. Dalawang araw pa lang siya, kaya hindi daw siya dapat isama sa gulo. <coughs> eh, kung dalawang araw lamang siya doon, eh, ibig sabihin yan, it was his predecessor who made that contract. And then that's no other, none other than Secretary Rojas. Then probably at the very least, he should be asked why uh, he did what he did to cause this problem, no? at the very least. <coughs> There's a paulit-ulit na interview namin with the DOTC and then with the GM Buenafe. Alam mo, yung paulit-ulit na parang theme na lumalabas na nakukuha namin when it pertains to the topic about you. Uh, parang it's a, uh, parang dynamics daw nito ng losing leader na nawala to sa mito mo. Parang ganun yung paulit-ulit na, ano na parang, this is, well, they say parang, sinasabi nila, parang, ang, Okay. Let, let me say something. Ano. Number one, we are not a losing bidder. We own the system. We built it. We have the rights to provide the maintenance. We have the legal rights to approve the maintenance provider. We have the rights to buy the trains. Right namin yan. Lahat yan karapatan namin eh. Bilang owner under the BLT agreement. These are rights. Ang, ang hindi sumusunod sa kontrata dito is DOTC. Inaagaw nila yung mga karapatan ng MRTC, yung aming mga rights. Sila ang umaagaw, sila yung pumapapel at wala naman silang papel. That was also confirmed by the COA report. Ang sabi ng COA, dalawa lang dapat yung ginawa nyo. Number one, let MRTC appoint the maintenance provider. Number two, if MRTC failed to appoint the maintenance provider, then you should seek legal action against them. Eh, yet, anong ginawa nila? Sila mismo ang nag-negotiate at nag-bid at nag-award. So even if you check the COA report, mali pa rin yung ginawa ng DOTC. Yan ang aking uh, remark dyan, ano? Eh, paano namin gagawin kung yung proposal namin ayaw nilang aksyonan? Ano, hindi nga kami makapasok sa system eh. We're not even allowed to enter our system and inspect. Paano kami gagawa ng isang bagay kung sila na may control at hawak ng sistema, ayaw nila kaming papasukin, ayaw nilang i-entertain yung mga proposal namin, which by the way, at no cost to government. How, how can you even think that we don't want to fix it? We have done everything we can, legally and otherwise, to try to fix it. The OTC has refused. Sila yung may ayaw. So, Sila yung may ayaw. So, mga hindi talaga kayo nag-uusap. Sa tingin niyo, sir, ha, ba, oh, hindi kayo nagkakausap. Sa tingin niyo, sir, saan papunta to? Kasi syempre, eh, ma mapupunta to sa arbitration. Well, siguro, in a few months, magbabago ng administrasyon. Eh, siguro, mag-uusap na kami doon ng gobyerno. Sa ngayon, mas mabilis yung kaysa pumunta tayo sa Singapore at uh, magkasuhan pa. Alam mo, the buyout, they have not done it in five years. They cannot do it in three months. It's impossible. At saka mahiya naman sila. 54 billion gagamitin nila para dito. Walang beneficyo ang publiko. And yet, ayaw nilang pagbigyan yung may mga pensionado doon sa SSS na humihingi ng 2,000 pesos. Ganun-ganun na lang ba ang pera sa gobyerno? 54 billion, itatapon nyo sa MRT para sa Land Bank and DB. SS uh, pensioners, ayon yung gasusan. Eh, siguro nakakahiya na yun. At mali na yun. Maling mali na yun.
Sige, kung makausap niyo si Secretary, sabihin niyo, kayo na mag-imbita. Pwede ba kayong maimbita sa harap ni Mr. Sobrepeña at mag-usap kayo? I will, I, will, I will show up anytime, any place. Ha? Kayo na mag-imbita. I can meet him anytime, any place, anywhere. Pag-usapan namin yung mga kontrata, yung mga sulat na hindi niya inaksyonan, at yung mga kapalpakan na ginawa niya sa MRT. Um, uh, there is nothing. There is nothing more. No. Uh, what if I may read from the report? What the report actually says is dapat mag-usap. Yun ang nakalagay sa report. Dapat mag-usap yung DOTC at yung private sector para maayos yung problema. Hindi problema yung kontrata. Ang problema is DOTC refuses to abide by the contract. All they have to do is follow the contract. Sundin lang yung kontrata. O, pag hindi umandar, edi lipat tayo, humanap tayo ng iba. But the problem is, they negotiate in secret, they appoint uh, unqualified uh, maintenance providers. E samantalang under contract, that was supposed to be our role. Yan talaga ang problema eh. We were under the impression that yung under the negotiated contract, yung yung after na bigyan ng GPP B yung approval. Parang among the five that invited, parang may stake ba kayo sa mga ibang those companies? They did not invite us. No. By invitation In, only. Parang sabi ata you refused to participate. Oh, uh, they never invited us, uh, and if they say we refuse, that's another lie. That's a that's a. Uh, by the way, any proposal that comes to DOTC on maintenance should be approved by MRTC. Yan yung nasa kontrata eh. Hindi nila naman dinadala sa amin. They never even told us there's a bid. They never invited. We have proposal. They never entertained it. Yan talaga ang problema. Ang problema natin dito, DOTC. Uh, gentlemen, ladies, our problem in the MRT3 is very simple. It's DOTC and Secretary Abaya. Ganun ka simple to. If they had just worked with us from the very start. Isipin nyo, kung tinanggap nila yung proposal ng Metro Pacific in 2011, tapos na lahat ngayon yan. One million people would be riding the MRT now. It's completely finished. At no cost to government. Isipin nyo, 2011 pa. O, kung, kung tinanggap nila yung proposal namin sa Fast Track Solution in 2014, tapos na lahat yung repairs by now. One year after. Tapos na lahat. Today, only 300,000 people ride the MRT. Noong 2012, 600,000 people were riding it. Okay, that's, that's the bottom line. Bakit nagkaka-traffic sa EDSA? It's because those 300,000 people are now riding the buses. Siguro, yung ilan sa inyo, kasama na dun. Di ba? Ang hirap na sumakay ng MRT. So if they just acted on any of our proposals, none of this would have happened. If they just followed the contract, none of this would have happened. Pero patuloy nilang ginagawa eh. So, siguro, patuloy din yung hirap natin at problema. At wala tayong magagawa. Even us, as owners, we cannot do anything. Because they have full control of it. Okay. Thank you. Huh? Thank you. Oh, may, unless may questions pa kayo. Sana. Okay. Overload na kami. Overload. na kayo. Editing na lang. Nako, yung prototype. Uh, na. Oh. Oh. Na. Oh. Na. 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 We ran it for six months in the Czech Republic plant. Six months, tinesting namin yan, with sandbags. Six months. Nung pumasa doon, with our engineers present every single day. No? Nung pumasa yan doon, dinala namin yung buong prototype dito sa Manila. Yung buong prototype. Tines namin yan in a brand new system. Brand new pa yung system natin noon. With sandbags. For over a month, pinatakbo namin yan with sandbags. All in all, the entire process of checking the worthiness of the train took us eight months. And it was completely manufactured in Czech Republic, shipped here as a prototype, completely finished. 
Compare it to what it is now. Dumating yung body, walang makina. Binili yung makina sa ano, ina-assemble dito. Paano magkakaroon ng manufacturer's guarantee yan? Okay. Pangalawa, assembled in the Philippines. Made in the Philippines. Hindi natin alam paano nangyari. It's supposed to be manufactured in China. Nakalagay sa terms of reference nila. It should have been run 5,000 kilometers before it's put on our system. Hindi nila sinunod. Patatakbuhin nila dito. Dito daw gagawin yung 5,000 kilometers. That is what we're objecting to because that is a danger to the system, our system, and to the public. Because you should run it at about 60 to 65 kilometers per hour, yung train, right? How can they run it here when the speed limit is 40? Kung ipipilit nila sa 60, 65 yan, baka mag-derail. It could derail. So, there is a danger. At the very least, they might damage the system. Baka hindi kaya yung 65. And, and worst of all, bakit nila pinapayagan yung Chinese manufacturer to ship over a prototype that has not been tested? Eh, napakalakas naman siguro sa kanila nung Chinese manufacturer. May 400 kilometers sa daw sa kondometer eh. Kaya... <laughs> <laughs> eh, yun ang problema eh. When you're dealing with uh, public lives, they should not play with public lives. They should not play with uh, the lives of the public who ride the train system na pwede na, pwede na. Hindi pwede yan. When you're running a public system like this, everything has to be strict by the book Okay, and pag sinabing 5,000 kilometer test, dapat 5,000 kilometers. Hindi 400 kilometers pwede na. That's, that's very dangerous. So, <coughs> I hope, uh, gentlemen, you are members of the press. If they invite you to ride that prototype test run, I hope you don't ride that train. Okay, because we don't know what will happen. Di ba? May qualifying ano doon sa isang contractor. 5,000. Unless approved by... MRT engineers. Why they pointed it out? I think the last. Oh, not the TOR. Yeah, that that is not in the TOR. I read the TOR in Congress. Clearly, it stated it should have run 5,000. Lahat ng mass transport around the world. Ano yan? That is a minimum. Another question okay. there is: Why will you approve waiving a requirement that you provided in the TOR? Sila rin, sila rin nag-require. Ang tanong doon, bakit may ngayon wini-wave yun? In the first place, ikaw humingi. Especially for a manufacturer that's never done it. Para mabilisan. Mabilisan at, at the uh, expense of the riding public, at the safety of the public. Uh, like I said, you shouldn't play with lives. Ay, isang tanong pa doon, hindi mo pa natitest yung prototype, pumorder ka na ng, ah. ng bagong LRDs. Ba? With the provision of returning it, reject book and order money. No order money. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there is no such provision. There is no such. Once it lands here, you use it. That's it. You pay for it. Common carrier. Common carrier. What, what he should have done is not even let it land in the Philippines until and unless it has been proven safe. That is what a responsible secretary would have done. Diba? A responsible secretary would have told the Chinese manufacturer, run the 5,000 kilometers with my people witnessing it. Pag pumasa, that's the only time you ship it to Manila. The president doesn't know I'm not sure what the president knows or does not know, but uh, I think because it involves public safety, we should look into it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.